Hey, Sagittarius, sun, moon, and rising sign. Listen, for all three, you're going to find this is a lucky breakthrough month. It's going to feel good. We all feel this new energy way better than the eclipses of March and April, but also so much goodness happening with the Venus Jupiter story this month. And Jupiter is the Lord of your sign. So you want to pay attention to how he's blessing you in mostly work-related areas, work and health improvements, as well as the ability to pay off debts, and maybe even some interesting developments around rental property situations and pets. We're going to dive into that and go into it in great detail over the next 20 minutes together. But before we start off, if you're new Sagittarius to my channel, welcome for the first time here. A uh, little bit about me. <laughs> Lori Lothian is my name. I hope you figured that out. I'm using the Western Tropical Zodiac and the Whole Sign House System. I love the fixed stars and minor asteroids. And I share those kinds of content with you all the time on my channel with 30 to 40 videos every month. So join along, subscribe, like, and you know, hit that notification bell and give me a try. By the way, I have a big promotion going on in the month of May. I'm giving away once a week free prizes free readings with me, free courses, free uh, replays of my 2024 All Signs videos at, that are for sale, the bundle for 77 bucks. I'm doing the mat, it's a May Madness giveaway to celebrate reaching 60,000 subscribers with my goal, by the way, at the end of the year to reach 100,000. If you want to get some of those prizes, perhaps uh, be one of my lucky ones, and I'm giving a lot away, not just one prize, then join my Cosmic Moonshine newsletter. And you can find out how to join that weekly newsletter. It comes out every single Saturday in the description box below. The contest is for those of you who have been beautifully enough, beautiful enough to be subscribers to this newsletter for the last several years. And then I'm directing you there if you want to be a part of the winning crew. Let's talk about the month ahead. Let's start with Jupiter. You're a Jupiter ruled being. And by the way, we are not covering the sun and the moon, the full moon, the new moon. Now nah. I do that content on my channel. Watch my channel. I do deep dives with Sabian symbols, all signs, asteroids and stars every month. So I'm not going to try to cover that here. I cover the planetary movement changes into different signs, as well as the step-by-step -step transits to watch for the month ahead. Number one, Jupiter's your guy. He's the Lord of your sign. He's your number one guy. He's got your back. He's your fairy godfather for Sages and for, of course, Pisces. He's a ruler of your sign. And this is important for you because he's finally leaving Taurus this month of May. He's been in Taurus since last May, trying to give you luck in your workhouse and your health and your pets and your rentals and your tenancy stuff and your debts. He's been there for a long time. It wasn't so great, by the way, like May through to December 31st. He was in a bad yoga with the North Node. He was retrograde for much of it. Uh, but now it's okay because he's moving. Uh, he was moving direct since December 31st. He was out of hardship and he's finishing strong here in the month of May. But he does leave this part of your sky on the 25th of May and begins a journey into your seventh house of marriage or significant long-term business and love partners, as well as your audience and marketplace place for your business or work. And this means that's where you will have blessings for an entirety of a whole year from the May 25th of this year, 25th, 26th, depends on your time zone, to J July, to June the 10th of 2025. If you're single and you're looking for love, it's going to be fantastic, especially if you want to find a committed love story. But it's also really good for other things like legal contracts and agreements. And you're coming into that new blessing. And I will predict for single Sages because of a Venus star point in June in Gemini. And then, of course, Jupiter there. And I'll be doing a video in uh, this about this for you in June. I can tell you a lot of reasons why this could bring a love of a lifetime. But in the meantime... Just be aware that Lord Jupiter is leaving the work and health house. And I hope he's done some good seed planting there for you with better health and better work stories, especially around like the job, the, the, the job routines and the health and health routines and solutions to health problems as well. Now, Sagittarius, the other story, of course, I want to cover this month is Lord Venus. She is a benefic like Jupiter does good and powerful and positive things when she moves through the sky. Wherever she goes, like just like Jupiter, good things try to happen. Now, Venus is in the sign of Taurus from April the 29th to May the 23rd. Taurus is your sixth house of health and work matters. Obviously, it can be an improvement in your health. 
Obviously, it could be more enjoyment in the workspace with those you work with, your colleagues, coworkers, employees, employer relationships. Or if you're not employed, you could get a job, especially because you have Juno, the goddess of agreements and contracts in your 10th house right now. And for a lot of you, this means that you may indeed find a job <laughs> or some work situations giving you some lucky breaks during the April 29th to May 23rd time frame. So those first three weeks of May are great for going on a job search, applying for jobs. It's also a good time to go on dates. This is the dating house. Uh, Venus likes to, to date. And uh, if you do date someone close to home with Saturn in your fourth house, some of you will find a long-term relationship through dating people who live near you during this April 29th to May 23rd time frame. When Venus is in the uh, earthy Taurus house of pets, there's a good chance of Saturn sitting in your fourth house with Neptune. You'll find your dream pet and it will be a long-term pet. But Saturn kind of makes you think of a rescue animal as well. So some of you may achieve rescue animal status and get yourself a rescue pet or just a new pet. And it may be very auspicious and beautiful and flowing circumstances around the acquiring of that new pet in the April 29th to May 23rd timeframe. And even surprising because your honest is there and you're shocked that you got a new pet in the month of May. You're like, I didn't see that coming. Um, okay, so we got the Venus narrative, but then Venus on May 23rd, add three weeks, so the last week of May, she will be, for sure, she will be in Gemini. Now that's your dating house, that's your long-term committed love house, right? And we'll have Jupiter going there on the 25th. And so Jupiter and Venus will be in your committed love and romance house. And it could also be about major developments in your longstanding love and commitment relationships. We'll break that down later in the month by month, bit by bit narrative. Hmm. With this transit here, a Venus in your Gemini part of your chart, and she is in a relationship at the same time to Saturn in your fifth house, sorry, fifth house, <laughs> Saturn in your fourth house, there may be some stories going on for you uh, between, I'd say, 23rd of May and the end of the month around contracts, agreements, and real estate property deals. She exalts the place where Saturn sits in the fourth house of land and property. And so therefore, some of you may be you know, literally looking at developments around land, property, real estate, also rental properties where you want to rent a property or sell a property, but all of that could be very active for you and, and positive. May the 23rd to the end of the month. Mars, the god of war, conflict, and aggression, and will and motive and power, divine power, will, willpower, motive, ambition, and drive. Mars has moved, will have moved April 30th into his home kingdom, which is the fifth house. Before that, he was in your fourth house, which could have meant the six weeks before April 30th, conflict in the house, construction in the house, traveling or moving around away from your home a lot. But now that he's moved into your natal fifth house on the 30th of April through to June the 9th, this is going to indicate a time of potential conflict or disagreements with fifth house people, lovers and children, romantic partners and children, maybe some disagreements, but maybe not because it does at least flow back to you as a Sag in a fire trine. Otherwise, you've got a lot of sexual drive and energy and passion going for you during this time and maybe more competitive spirit, like you're going to compete to get what you want in life, not going to give up. You may be more physically active here, more athletic during this time of April 30th to June the 9th. And with Mars here, you might be making some major decisions around things to do with your entrepreneurial or creative projects and very passionately driven to focus on them as well. You may be healing a chironic wound, though, to do with love and romance, as well as children and ch your children, if you have children. Um if you have children, this transit every two years of Mars to Aries can mean a child leaves the nest or you move away from a child. It doesn't always have to be conflict with those people. And that's going to be, uh, you know, again, a story that you might see uh, April 30th to June the 9th. With the North Node making Mars so much more intense, where the eclipses have happened, where Chiron is sitting, a lot of this could take you back to that April eclipse, right? April 8th. What is this breakthrough in creativity, love, romance, or your children that's helping to heal a deeper wound that you felt in this area of your chart since 2019? Mars is cutting through to heal something. Mercury. 
is finally direct on the April 25th. And so as we head into the month of May, Mercury is moving forward and he's moving forward in the sign of Aries until the middle of May, the 15th of May. This is Mercury, contracts, news, communications, and conversations, lovers and children, creative projects and entrepreneurial stuff, moving forward, moving quickly. Don't forget, he's been there since sometime in March. I think it's March, the third week of March, finally leaving May 15th. A lot of communications with lovers, children, a lot of rethinking creative and entrepreneurial projects, right? Now that he's in direct motion, nothing is confusing. Nothing is waylaid. You know what you want to do. You're making decisions now that are really clear and taking directional focus around it with Mars there as well. So I'd say something like mm, May the 15th to, I'm sorry, April 25th to May the 15th, <clears throat> you're being very concise and precise in what decisions and actions you want to take regarding romantic love, children, entrepreneurial or creative projects. On next, on the 15th, he moves into the sign of Taurus, which is your workhouse, and we'll be moving there in direct motion to June the 3rd. May 15th to June the 3rd, therefore, or the last two weeks of May, perhaps, you would find yourself mm -mm, communicating, emailing, phone calling, messaging, a lot of people connected to debts, money, and pets and tenancies and rentals. A lot of negotiation, deal-making, or contractual arrangements might be made, especially when it comes to land and property, because this is a Mercury flowing to Saturn, Neptune, in your fourth house of land, real estate, and property, as well as a potential for some conversations or big agreements or disagreements going on with a sibling. That's because of Pluto in the house of siblings squaring that Mercury as he moves through your sixth house. So generally speaking, sibling disagreements or neighbor disagreements or cousins and nieces and nephews disagreements regarding conversations that are difficult could be about money owed or debt debts owed karmic or real money owed with that mercury transit through may 15th to june the third okay let's break it down bit by bit let's grind through the individual transits. Get a pen or a paper, write these down. I mean, otherwise, you're not going to remember the dates. <laughs> so grab a pen or a paper. May the 1st through the 4th, the beginning of the month, a couple of things are happening. First of all, it's difficult to start out with this one, but Venus is in a square to Pluto, and that's a power struggle around love or money most often. And this is Venus and Taurus, which is your sixth house of work and colleagues and co-workers, right? Quite often, those sorts of people. And it's then there's a disagreement or a tension or a power struggle with siblings, neighbors, cousins. Now, it's possible too that this is about money because indebtedness and debts can be very much a Venus Pluto thing involving the sixth house. And there's some sense of friction around finances regarding someone powerful in your third house a sibling, a cousin, a niece, a nephew, a neighbor. And then at the same time, of May 1 to 4, we see some positive energy from Mars to Pluto. Mars is moving through your fifth house. That's your children, right? That's your creativity. That's your romantic partner. And there's a flow. Mars is kicking up a flow storm. And he's talking to the, the Pluto story in a positive and kindly way. And he could bring you some commercial success of some kind or some drive, power, ambition, and will. When it comes to things you want to achieve regarding creative projects, art projects, entrepreneurial endeavors, and romantic and love relationships and children. A powerful transformative trip with a powerful relationship partner is examples of what could happen here in the May 1 to 4th timeframe. May the 12th to the 14th, we see the sun conjunct Uranus. And there's going to be a series of planets conjuncting Uranus. So get your breath for the surprises of the Venus and the Jupiter coming as well. So we see the first surprise, May 12th to the 14th, with sun-Uranus conjunction in your sixth house. I don't want to keep repeating it. Remember, work, pets, tenancies, debts, debt elimination, health, workplace, job, 
Okay, that's the sixth house. Remember, that's the Taurus part where everything's happening. Some surprising unexpected developments may be regarding authority figures or bosses on May the 12th to the 14th, but Venus is loving up from the same place, Saturn, in your fourth house. So whatever these surprises are, it benefits you greatly when it comes to the ability to sell or rent or, or to rent a property, most likely, or to lease out a property, or to have some positive developments regarding matters of the home and homestead as it connects to work and health. As we move forward to May the 17th to May the 12th, or I did that, May the 17th to the 22nd, OMG, what a busy sky it is. Let's start off with the Taurus narrative. Don't forget, we have a pile up in Taurus. We're going to be sitting, sitting, looking at a story where we have the sun, Jupiter, Venus, Uranus and Mercury in Taurus for a long time this month. And so this is going to be a hot spot for you, a big deal part of your sky. With this energy, I want to point to May 17th, where Jupiter is now conjunct the sun. Jupiter conjunct the sun is the death of the sun, I mean, the death of Jupiter in the heart of the sun. But it's more than that. Jupiter, once every 12 years, joins the sun in Taurus. And this is a, it's, a, it's the first time he's done it since 12 years ago. And between now and his conjunction to the sun in Gemini next year, he is actually blessing you for one year in all things six house Sagittarius. Luck with pets, blessings with work, blessings with health, debt relief, <clears throat> tenancy agreements, etc. I'm getting hoarse, but I'm recording all these videos <clears throat> in one day, sort of. And against the backdrop of the Jupiter reset, is that Jupiter is doing the reset well. The sun is also sextiling Neptune. This makes it very dreamy, soulmate-y, um, beautiful manifestation energy. Jupiter, sun, Uranus can be about a big manifestation energy. Do you want to manifest a dream home, a dream tenancy, a dream rental, a dream pet, a dream job, a dream health situation? That's a big vibe for you around May 17th to the 22nd. Now, also going on here is Venus, the goddess of money and love, will be conjunct Uranus. That's happening again May 17th to the 22nd. It's such a busy time. She's more doing it on May 18th. Now, when I say conjunct Uranus, the god of surprise, remember on May 12th, the sun did the same thing. So there's a series of surprises here. Unexpected money and love developments, Venus in her great dignity, bringing nothing but the best, paying off a debt maybe in May, May 18th-ish, give or take a day on either side, a couple days on either side, paying off a debt, dream pet opportunity, super luscious opportunity for your ideal rental property, uh, super, super great opportunities regarding health and work matters. Again, that's on the 18th of May, but this whole thing is the 17th, the 22nd of May. All of these stories I've just told you, Jupiter, Sun conjunction, Jupiter, Sun sextile Neptune, but also Venus in a conjunction to Uranus. Uranus was already deputized, right, by Pluto on April 21st, and she's following up that energy now on May the 18th. May the 23rd, through to the 28th is also a very busy time frame. It starts off with Venus conjunct Jupiter. Now, that's a planetary war in India, but in modern astrology, it's luck upon luck. Venus in her home kingdom in dignity is conjuncting Jupiter in Taurus. He has to follow her orders, but she's got the luck. She is the lucky one. Jupiter is growth and expansion and plenty, and Venus is, you know, luck and ease and flow. I guess I'd say because it's all happening in the context of, say, Juno in the 10th house, you may have the supreme opportunity May 23rd to the 28th for a dream job offer or opportunity. You may also have super luck <clears throat> in a dating situation. The dating world could open up a corridor for single sages of dating somebody May the 23rd to the 28th in a relationship that's going to last and feel like you've met your love of a lifetime dream soulmate, although it is a karmic relationship with Venus in your sixth house. Aren't they all, but particularly karmic. And at the same time, this is happening with Venus, Jupiter, the lucky, lucky strike energy here. We also have the fact that Venus flows to Neptune, as I mentioned, but one more ingredient. Throughout this entire time of May the 23rd to 28th, you'll see that Jupiter also sitting in that sixth house, 
is in a long standing sextile or flow relationship to that Neptune. So both you'll see both Venus and Jupiter flowing to Neptune from the sixth house to the fourth house. If you want to buy or sell or, or rent or renovate or build or construct a home, if you're wanting to hire an employee, an employee or a service person or things like that, this is going to an architect, this is your dream on hiring opportunity window of time, May 23rd to 28th. But again, some of this could even be as simple as your dream pet. And then on May the 25th, there's a Venus trine Pluto, which is going to be followed up on May 30th by a Jupiter trine Pluto. Now Venus is trining Pluto from Gemini. She's moved there. As I mentioned, she's going to move into your house of significant legal contracts, agreements, and marriage type partners. Uh, she's going to do that May 23rd. Now it's May 25th. And she looks over her shoulder at Pluto in a, in a flowing air trine to your third house. This can be a powerful opportunity to involving a sibling, a cousin, a niece, a nephew, a neighbor, and some legal agreements or contracts that benefit you greatly or you both, or a dream opportunity for a powerful journey with a significant other. This is also similar to what's happening on May 30th, and Jupiter is just diving in a little further and expanding what Venus starts on May 25th, as he then also flows to Pluto. Now, Venus, Pluto, Jupiter, Pluto are wealth energies, and so there can be an increase of your wealth at this time through contracts, agreements, negotiations, legal contracts, especially vows, contracts, seventh house matters or things to do with lucky breaks in your marriage and relationship partnerships, if you have one, as it applies to wealth that you can generate from neighborhood, neighbors, <clears throat> travel, and learning opportunities. May 25th and May the 30th. Lastly, lastly, Mercury conjuncts Uranus. This is surprising, unexpected news. Good or bad, I can't say. It's in Taurus. The only person left standing now that Jupiter and Venus have left the Taurus part of your sky, the last man standing, so to speak. <laughs> Even Mercury has moved. No, Mercury's still there. What date am I on? Yeah, May the 30th. We still have Mercury and, yeah, Mercury and Uranus. They're the last two people standing in your sixth house. <laughs> And they're conjoin conjoining forces. So unexpected, surprising news about six house matters. Should I say it again? Tennessee's pets, rentals, debts, dating situations, work situations, and health situations. Now, I don't know about worrying so much about the health situation because you've had so much blessings from Jupiter and Venus there lately, but you could get a shocking or unexpected lab result back. I'm just going to make something up, okay? Otherwise, even with this conjunction happening, it is flowing to Saturn, Neptune in your fourth house, you know, and it is flowing to Juno in your 10th house. And at the end of the day, I'm not so worried about it, but if there is a surprise here, around May 30th, it can be a work surprise. It could be a work opportunity, agreement, contract, hiring situation, or something like that. All right. Thanks for listening to that, uh, Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, and Rising. If you want to get this kind of content like today, you're listening to today before the public, uh, it's access, early access content, ad-free on Patreon, my Patreon community. I'm recording this uh, on Sunday. The April 14th. You're going to get it the next Sunday. If you want to get this well ahead of the curve, well before everybody else, please like, subscribe. No, please join my Patreon community. It's five bucks a month. You can get two free courses from me for trying me out. It's automatically given to you when you sign up for the cheapest tier, five bucks a month. Chiron, the key to purpose and sinistry. Are you my relationship person? Two classes taught, resell value $44. You get those courses for free. Check it out. Try me out. There's up to three Zoom meetings with me a month. I teach things there. I comment there. I'm more active there with a smaller community of 300 people. And that is something you're interested in. Come join in. Otherwise, get on the Cosmic Moonshine newsletter and check it out. Maybe you're going to be one of my many winners on the weekly draw throughout the month of May. It's May Madness as I'm giving away prizes to celebrate 60,000 subs. By the time you're watching this, it'll be over 60,000. But I am recording in April. Thank you, everyone. Take care and have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful May.